All right, Ricky Flex, fresh off viewing the new Thor Love and Thunder trailer. We're here to give our instant reactions. So halftime, we got Celtics absolutely beaten down on the heat right now. We needed a break from such a boring game, and we got some excitement. MCU next phase four movie directed by Taika Waititi. We get the first official trailer following the teaser a couple weeks back. What were your initial reactions upon seeing the first official trailer for Thor Love and Thunder? All gods will die. All gods will die. Christian Bale, very much back. Little hiatus, three-year hiatus for him after Ford versus Ferrari, but he's so back playing a Marvel villain who, I guess, in a macro view, like an outer view for the whole movie as a whole, Thor Love and Thunder, this looks like, for me, this will be very good, but at the end of the day, it's trying to rely, or not rely, but it has the same Ragnarok vibes. It's just that Ragnarok being the first Taika Waititi film and this being the second, I feel like it just won't capture that same energy, similar to like a Guardians versus Guardians 2. Mm. Guardians 2, very good movie, but it just can't live up to the first one. Even with Christian Bale coming in as the villain for this movie, I just don't think it's going to live up to the first one. I know it's a hot take right out the bat, but um, that's kind of where my vibes were. I th Those two, seeing Christian Bale, and obviously, and then what my take just there, I think those are the two main thoughts going in after the, uh, seeing this trailer. How about yourself? So main takeaway is definitely Gore the God Butcher. It's definitely Christian Bale. Uh, they did not show him in the teaser trailer a couple weeks back. There were some rumors that people were starting to worry about whether we were going to actually be able to see Christian Bale and his acting skills, whether he was going to be covered up by CGI. I think this trailer provided a lot of relief to MCU fans that you're going to actually tell this is Christian Bale. He's not going to be covered in a bunch too much makeup where you're not be able to make, you aren't going to be able to make out his expressions and what he's trying to portray. I think this trailer did a perfect job of teasing who Gore the God Butcher will be. And I think I have a firm idea of what his motives will be in this movie already. And I, I'm excited by the parallels. It seems like he's lost somebody. He lost maybe a love of his due to a God acting out of selfish reasons, out of acting for themselves. And now you have a parallel with Thor being reunited with his love, okay, with Jane Foster, who's taking on the mantle of like Lady Thor here. So I think you got some interesting dynamics there. But I agree with you that I, I'm i starting to be a little bit skeptical of Taika reclaiming that magic from the first movie. And I think you hit the nail on the head comparing Guardians of the Galaxy 1 to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, the jokes didn't hit quite the same. They felt a little bit stale. They felt a little bit forced. And just like in this trailer... Thor didn't knock my socks off like he did in Ragnarok. Okay, yeah. I know it's only a trailer, but the jokes he was saying, directing towards Jane, it wasn't, I guess it's like the character we expect Thor to be, I guess now. So I, I, I think we have higher expectations. It's not enough that he's making jokes. Exactly. The first one, Ragnarok, was a total shift from the previous two Thor films. Completely different tone, not just for him, but the MCU, really. Like, yes, we have Tony Stark, who is that quirky guy, right? And the year before Ragnarok, we had Tony, uh, we had Doctor Strange, and he's an Eric, similar to Tony Stark type. But Ragnarok was just a completely different movie than anything else we've ever seen. Um, even Guardians, I would say, is the closest comparison, I would say. But it's with a core Avenger that we've already seen a different expectation because we already saw two iterations of Thor and also two previous Avenger movies with him. Uh, other than Guardian and then versus Guardians, which nobody had any expectations for, because to be honest, they they aren't an A list MCU hero or group. So mm -hmm. that's why when we're going into the second Thor here, it's just like, okay, now we've seen the Ragnarok, so those are now our new expectations. And he was arguably the one of the best parts, if not the best part of Infinity War. One of the better parts in Endgame, although there is controversy, obviously with the dad bod, which they continue the joke in this one. And now it's kind of just kind of re redo that image, literally, 
And now it's carrying into, all right, let's build off a of Ragnarok on its own separate thing. Chris Hemsworth said that he wants it to be Thor, not just for this movie, but moving forward. We have a new Lady Thor, Natalie Portman, coming onto the scene. How is she, how many movies or shows is she going to get after this? A lot of different factors playing in to make the expectations that much bigger to go along with Russell Crowe and Christian Bale joining the movie. So the expectations just keep rising. Right. A hundred percent agree. And I think MCU fans just got to hope that this new Thor doesn't grow stale. Okay. Compared to the appearances in Ragnarok, Infinity War, and then Endgame. Okay. How much can we take of this new style of Thor? Will they have to reinvent like the character again after this movie, right? Time will tell once it comes out. I don't want to speak too early about that. But I want to say other aspects of this trailer I really enjoyed. Uh, it looks and sounds amazing, okay? It has like an 80s type of adventure style to it, similar to like a Ragnarok. It's bright. It's colorful. Uh, they got the Sweet Child of Mine instrumental that worked beautifully in my opinion. Uh, to go along with that, I love that the Guardians of the Galaxy do not make appearance in the main trailer. It sets an expectation. They were part of the teaser. Do not expect them for, a, for an extended length in this upcoming movie by not being featured in the main trailer. I think that's sending a strong message. Uh, feels like this movie will eventually come down to lady Thor and Thor against Gore, the God butcher. Okay. It feels like that's what the eventual showdown is going to be, which I love. I don't want this huge slug fest between 10 different heroes and 10 different villains. Right. I like that. Especially if you have Christian Bale as a villain, you want that one-on-one -on -one type of feel for, a marvel movie like a, like a like a like a not one where it feels like you're going to need to include other heroes incorporate other characters to take on the villain make it a little more personal for thor okay like ragnarok was and i think that worked wonderfully with a villain like cape blanchett i mean christian bale and cape blanchett like taiko atiti like working with an embarrassment of riches for his first two mcu films i just can't get over the fact that Christian Bale sounds amazing too. And I, I'm really excited. I think they teased it enough where they gave him like three lines total, three or four lines, but they all hit hard. They all hit. And it seems like this is an aspect of Christian Bale we've never seen. We've seen him in the bat suit. We've seen him as Bruce Wayne. We've seen him in so many historical or prestigious type of roles. Now let's see him as an antagonist, have some fun playing the opposite of a superhero as the antagonistic character. I'm and beyond hype and like the opposite type of person type of type of character not just by motives but also chris hemsworth thor this new image of thor you know kind of a comedic atmosphere right mm -hmm. uh very jacked muscular versus christian bale's gore the god butcher is very Dark. slim reaper like uh grim reaper type vibes but like very pale uh again very monotone very serious like complete opposite type of character and like all gods will die like real it's to the point like dark and i agree with you i like the limited amount of lines i like how we got to see an image the second image in this trailer you could clearly see that's christian bale that's like it i know it's cgi but like that the second image out of the four images we saw of gore the god butcher the second one was clearly christian bale it almost looked like makeup but then the other three was clearly CGI. It was almost like you're trying to pinpoint, does that really look like Christian Bale? But in the day, and you look close enough, it is. Um, I do like that. Uh, we saw different types of images, only a couple lines. Save the best stuff for the movie. That's what we like to see here at the Drive-In Podcast. And finally, I will just say, Russell Crowe. I was... We, barely, we saw the same image from behind earlier in the trailer, in the big first minute of the trailer of his back. And I'm like, are they really going to save Russell Crowe again for the movie? Because, like, they still haven't shown his face. So I was like, man, like, they're really, like, trying to not show him until the movie. So I'm just like, hmm, that's kind of a red flag. But then they show him at the end with an accent, an accent to his voice. Very interesting and comedic relief. It was just comedic relief. So interesting to see what Zeus, Russell Crowe's role will be in this movie. Yeah, I, I still commit to my prediction that he's going to have less than 10 minutes of screen time in this movie. Doesn't seem like he'll be here for the long haul. He's on the main relief. title card. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So how are you not going to include the name Russell Crowe if you're going to show him in the trailer? It's not just a cameo. It's you know, it's a ten minute appearance. It's like having Professor X on the title card of Multiverse of Madness. Was he though? Like the poster, the movie poster. Well, Professor X. I don't know, but he was in the trailer. I don't think he was. Oh yeah, tra- right, right, right. He was in the but, teaser in like the second yeah. trailer. You know, like he was, he was, he. It was well known he was going to be in the movie. You know, uh. I guess you can kind of compare that to like Guardians of the Galaxy. Are they going to be on like right. the main card here? I guess, but like I think they're going to have. I think he might have more screen time than the Guardians. The Guardians. That's what I'm thinking now. The main trailer. Yeah, um, but I do want to say something about Christian Bale because you skipped ahead to Zeus. I do like the idea that he is shown. You can clearly see his face in one part of the trailer. Right. It's kind of telling me we're going to see Gore the God Butcher. Um, develop over this movie it's going to start with like an origin okay i assume when you see his clear face it's before darkness has like taken over his body before he becomes the god butcher that might be the moment where you find out what the gods did to his love all right or whoever he cared about deeply and then as the movie progresses you see you see like the demented face the black sludge drudging from his lips Okay, and him becoming this evil figure. So I, I don't think we're going to be able to tell it's Christian Bale the entire movie, but you're going to get that personal aspect for a lot of it. And I dig like character development and like personal stories for the villains. That's where the MCU villains are at their best. So feed that to me. Uh, but Russell Crowe, may, I'm kind of hoping this is a bridge to like another character, like a Hercules type of character. Obviously, Zeus, who's his son, another MCU hero, Hercules, right? There's uh there hasn't been like a casting for that character yet, but it's almost assumed that this character will make an appearance, which is also exciting for the future because like it seems like in Thor's corner of the universe things are expanding, and it tells me that Thor is not going to be done after this movie, which is a good sign, right? A Phase one hero that is still going to last right through Phase four, which is a rarity when you look at Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., uh, Scarlett Johansson, right? potentially jeremy renner okay and we got like smaller role hulk you know so it's good to have a focal point still from early stages of the mcu uh i guess you could say he's also expanding because he won't be around for long that's what i was gonna say but like there i don't think the rest of the cast is there yet i don't think valkyrie tessa thompson is ready to take over this role even though they show her going against gore the god butcher i don't think jane foster is gonna be like just the one to replace Chris Hemsworth here. I, I can't imagine Natalie Portman signing on for like an extended contract with Marvel. I don't know why. I just don't see it. Uh, but yeah, that, I guess those are my thoughts. Well, I, I so you said basically what I was going to rebut with. So uh, uh, kudos to you. I was just counterclaiming but, everything before you. That's, that I'm literally like, what like, don't you Don't even said. think about it, Ricky. Don't even think about it. I already cut it cover. <laughs> but uh, no, like Natalie Portman, like they say in the show, it's been eight years, seven months, whatever, how many days. Why come back? She could have said no. You know, so that, that tells me she signed on for the phase four. Like, she's not for more than this movie. So I could see, I'm not saying I predict this. I'm just saying I could see Thor maybe sacrificing himself because he's different than the other gods, as Gore says, sacrificing himself to defeat Gore and the other guys live. Wow. And then they take on the mantle and go on with your counter, your own personal counter argument that I was going to make, which is okay there are expanding this God universe and that's what it's just going to be. It's going to be lady Thor. It's going to be Valkyrie, potentially Hercules or whoever else they want to bring into the frame here. And guardians are all who are also in this movie. And you predict, and I also agree limited screen time. They're also in that, the outside earth six, one, six universe. So they can also carry that outside universe perspective. So I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I could totally see again, the only people that are really relevant right now, from phase one core Avengers is Hulk who doesn't have his own TV show. And then Hulk who, you know, you could see lady Thor taking over if she wants Lana Portman. Why, why would she come back? Like I said, and she's a big enough actress in Hollywood to head up, you know, a MCU uh, hero. Uh, the only thing what I'm thinking of, it's from a previous conversation we had uh, is thinking about the characters that are being introduced to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, whether it be in TV shows or movies, they're lesser known characters, they're C list characters. It's good to have Thor in your back pocket. And like Kevin Feige, if you can confirm that Chris Hemsworth still wants to play the character, which he has said that he still wants to do, 
I think you got to ride that wave. I don't think you can get rid of him yet because he is like arguably alongside Spider-Man, your strongest asset in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And you or you could argue that Scarlet Witch was also like in that top five, like most integral pieces for the future of the MCU. And her future's up in the air now too, obviously following the events of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I think you need Hemsworth in the future alongside Spider-Man just to carry over these C-list characters until they become more household names, you know, whether that be for another movie or two, or maybe he makes his like ultimate sacrifice in the next like team up movie, whether that be secret wars or a future Avengers movie. I think that's where you see Hemsworth meet his like demise or his end to his MCU run. Hmm. If when he does die or if he does die, but I'm, if he does die, it has to be like Chris Pratt right there. Like oh, Peter man. Quill. it has yeah. to be right. I don't it's know. gotta be, it's gotta be <laughs> the guardians. Dr. The guys Strange. are going to be done though too. As like, guard, like volume three is coming out next year. And you think that'll be it? Yeah. Well, for like Chris Pratt, yeah. I don't. I can't see him like continue to play. He Star just came. Lord. We just didn't talk about this, but there's another trailer out uh, with him in another Prime Video. Yep. Movie, another Tomorrow War type thing. I don't. I. I just like, so, the, the Guardians. You can't have. You can't separate the Guardians of the Galaxy. Like you. Like unless you're Groot and Rocket. Like they can do their own thing together. Everybody else can't really go on their own. Drax okay. can't go on his own. Peter Quill right. can't go on his own. But, you know what I'm saying is why not keep it going? I feel like all of them, except Vin Diesel. I think Vin Diesel is no longer being Groot after Guardians Three. And also James Gunn said he's done. So like they're not going to do oh, a movie oh. without James Gunn. Like That's he said, this is the sick. end. This is the end. He said, like, quote, this is the end for, like, it's, it's written as the end for these Guardians. So there might be another Guardians wow. of the Galaxy group, but it won't be with Peter Quill. So Sylvester Lamar. Stallone, that group from Guardians 2, comes back. <laughs> there could be members of that group that eventually become a part of these new Guardians of the Galaxy. I can see a group returning, but it definitely won't have the core of the Guardians of the Galaxy being featured That's... in Thor Love and Thunder. In the holiday special in wow. volume three. That's 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 news. I didn't you I, cry? <laughs> no, but I just think that changes the whole outlook. If the Guardians end before Thor, that's shocking to me. I think that's not gonna happen. I don't know. And that's I, a significant I, piece of the MCU well, I, that goes away. That, that which we were just talking about, like, oh, we need people from earlier MCU phase four. Uh, to help out with phase five like if they go away after next year it's like oh then let's just revamp the whole thing they got their own little small arc going starting with infinity war uh part of end game and now this movie so it's like there should be a proper wrap, wrap up of sorts but uh yeah i don't know about like the guardians seem like there's some finality to volume three thor seems very much up in the air because you have the willingness open willingness of chris hemsworth like i know like because James Gunn has come to defense. Like people saying they want to recast Chris Pratt when that was going on. He said, like, if Chris Pratt's not in it, I'm not going to be in it, which makes me think of James Gunn's not directing another movie. Right. Chris Pratt's not going to be acting in another movie, you know? Right. It's a teamwork just, type Also, thing. Chris Pratt, like his career, not taken off post Guardians. Like, or not post, but he's still doing it. But like, you know, Tomorrow War, not a bad movie. Probably just... wrapping up Jurassic World. Dominion yeah. Here. So it's, I, I don't know. I think his career is not. It's he's just gonna be a movie star, which is awesome. I'm just saying, like it's not like gonna be like superstardom. At post, I mean, he's already his, there, bro. I meant like critically, I guess, like like he's gonna the be a he's movie a star, star of like two billion dollar franchise. Yeah, he's just gonna be like a movie star, which is perfectly fine. You know, we yeah. talk about Vinny Chase, like, oh, do you want to be more than just a movie star? Nope, that's fine. Are you I talking just, to him like in prestige type movies? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I guess it was also, never. I mean, be like that's that. he was like. That before he was a superhero, he was like doing those that he was trying to dabble into that world with dabble. somewhat success, where he like supporting roles in movies like her and uh Moneyball. He dabbles there, but he was looking for that big break. And he, I mean, he's the leader of the Jurassic World, the second Jurassic right. Art yeah. franchise, and the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't no, know how yeah. much I he, guess I he's I got guess all I the just, money. So right, yeah. It's, I guess I just always saw him as like, oh, he could make that pivot, but I just looks like it's not working out for him as of right now and they just put, put bring this all back to chris emsworth like no matter what i i like i said i don't think he's going to die i'm just saying i could see that happening i like i won't be too shocked 
Yeah, like, yeah, it, it would like it wouldn't be bad if it was like he died at the hands of the God Butcher and it's Christian Bale playing him. I guess that would be like an ideal end to his run. But uh, yeah, I just don't think it's gonna happen. So if you think it is, like we'll just agree to disagree. You know what I mean? I'm just saying it's. I'm not, I wouldn't be shocked if it happened. Put your money on the table, Ricky. Is he gonna hey. live in this movie or not? As of right now, he's gonna live. Okay, so we both think he's gonna live. Any other final thoughts before we wrap up our thoughts on the Thor: Love and Thunder trailer? Good trailer, though, right? I know we. It was kind Overall, of overall like good. I the, yeah, word, we, the the parts that I was detract that I found as a detraction were actually Thor's lines. Everything else I liked. It's it seemed redundant to the first movie, and that's what I'm afraid of. I, I, I think I do like your point with the like, character arc with the villain because Kate Blanchett's like, uh, Hella and Ragnarok. Yeah. We got like we didn't really get like we got some flashbacks, but it was more just like storytelling narration. Picture. It was just a picture. yeah, <laughs> pictures of like from the ceiling. This one it seems like we're gonna get deeper, more in depth. So I I, I do like that like, with Christian Shots Bale. Part. Yeah, so I do like that. Even though I do liked, I did like Hella. I just think this is going to be better. So maybe that will counterbalance some of that expectations that we've had compared to Ragnarok, right? So I, that we're talking about. So I don't want to be too negative because I do think this overall was a good trailer. Oh yeah, no, much I'm, I'm not negative. I'm not negative whatsoever on this. I think it was. I think it was really good. I'm not saying it was amazing. I think it was no, really good. Yeah, yeah. I think we sound a little negative. No. No, it's just you thought you, we we uh, the reason we sound down is that we brought up the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And I thought you were shedding a tear. It is sad, man. I <laughs> that is sad. Yeah, I'm not going to shed a tear. We're not bringing this up anymore. We cannot continue talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. All right, next Thor topic. Thunder trailer. Let's move on to the next trailer. 